Hey everyone, this is Ben from Stark Knives, and welcome back to the channel for another knife making video. It's getting close to the Christmas season, and I'm working on getting some orders finished up to send out for holiday gifts. And today I'm getting started on a really cool project of three Quaken EDC fixed blades. So let's go ahead and go into the shop and get this project started. The steel I'm going to be using for this project is some 5 32nd inch thick W2, and I chose that because it's a good high carbon steel that is able to take a really nice hamone, which is what the customer was wanting for the blade finish. The first step is to sketch the outline of all of the blades onto the bar of steel using a sharpie. That way you have something to cut and grind towards. Alright, so here's the final design that we came up with. It has around a four inch blade and a four and a quarter inch handle. And then I went ahead and sketched in a nice deep sharpening notch and a little finger guard to prevent your hand from slipping up onto the blade. I went ahead and sketched four onto this bar of steel with a sharpie, and now it's going to be time to start cutting them out. I start the cutting out process by drilling a hole using a drill bit into where I want to start the sharpening notch, because that'll enable me to not have to file everything by hand in order to actually get those notches put into the blades. Then I move over to my porta band with a bimetal blade and start cutting out the rough profiles of the knives. Now that they've all been roughly profiled on the bandsaw, it's time to move over to my Broadneck Ironworks grinder and start doing some final profiling. I start with a quarter inch small wheel attachment and then I use that in order to actually clean up the insides of those sharpening notches. I then use the 8 inch contact wheel and a 60 grit belt in order to smooth out the rest of the profile. So now I'm going to be putting on a half inch small wheel attachment, which will enable me to then profile the inside radii of the bottom of the handle. Alright, so all of the profiling is now done. I took the tang up to a 120 grit finish just to polish it up a little bit, and I'm super happy with how ergonomic these handles are combined with a nice upswept tip. So now it's going to be time to drill some holes into the tangs of these blades. Here I'm just using a quarter inch cobalt drill bit to drill the pinholes into the blades. I then drill a bunch more holes into the tang of the blade so that there is some additional weight reduction. The final step of drilling the tang holes is to countersink all of them using a large drill bit or a countersinking tool. And here they all are looking nice and holy like a good Swiss cheese. Now it's time to do the preheat treat grinds on these blades. I'm starting out by breaking the 90 degree corners using a worn out 60 grit belt so that I don't break off all of the fresh grit from a new belt. I then start bringing the grind higher up the blade using a fresh 60 grit belt. I then put on a 120 grit belt in order to polish up the bevels and clean them up a little bit. Here's what the primary grind looks like before heat treating. I have it up to the 120 grit finish and I left the edge decently thick, probably around like 20 thousandths of an inch or so. Now the last step before heat treating is going to be putting a swedge on the top line of the knife on the upsweep with a 8 inch contact wheel.
And here are all those blades ready for heat treating. Now that all the blades have their rough grimes on them, it's time to start claying up the blade in order to achieve a homon finish. What a homon is, is a differential hardening of the blade, so the spine will be a little bit softer than the cutting edge, and then once you etch that, it'll have a really cool ghost-like pattern. And how we achieve a homon is by giving the blade a clay coating. So here I have some satanite clay that I'm going to mix with some water, and then I'm going to apply that coating to the blade, let that dry overnight, and then heat treat the knife tomorrow. I create the clay coating by mixing the clay powder with some water to create a sort of slurry or paste. I want it to be roughly the texture of a thick batter so that it sticks to the blade but is not super runny and also not super thick. Here you can see that I have the clay coating at about an eighth of an inch thick. All right, so after letting the coating dry overnight, it's nice and hard, and now it's time to get heat treating. For this W2, I preheat the oven to 1475 degrees Fahrenheit, and then once the oven is up to temperature, I go ahead and put the blades in. I then let the blades soak at that temperature for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes are up, it's time to quench the blades in some Parks 50 quenching oil. I have it at room temperature, which is around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. After quenching, I just scrape off the clay from the blade using a towel, and then I like to test the edge hardness using a file. It should just skate right over the edge and not bite in at all. At this point, before tempering, I like to be able to do a quick grind on a 120 grit belt, and this will enable me to see if there's a hamon in the blade. You can see there's a light ghosting effect on the middle of the blade, and that then is an indication to me that I can go ahead and temper and I'll have a nice hamon. So I do a temper of two cycles of two hours each at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and let the blade cool to room temperature in between. All right, after tempering, they have a nice straw gold color, which is exactly what we're looking for. And now it's time to get working on doing the finish grinds. The first thing I do after tempering is grind the flats up to 400 grit. I do that with 120 first and then directly to a 400 since there's not so much surface area to take care of. Now it's time to do the finish grinds on the actual primary bevels. I use another fresh 60 grit belt here and always make sure to dip the blade into some water between passes so that I don't ruin the temper of the edge. I grind the bevels all the way up to a 400 grit finish as well because I feel like that gives me a good starting point for the hand sanding process. With all of the blades hand sanded to 400 grit, it's time to head inside to the hand sanding bench right over here to hand sand these blades. So the basic idea behind hand sanding is that we're going to be taking all of these grind lines that are going up and down on the blade and then sanding those so that they're horizontal. And then that is going to help us polish the blade to a super high finish like this. And then that's going to make the hamon stand out way more after etching. For hand sanding, I have a couple different sanding sticks that I wrap the sandpaper around. I use Rhino wet sandpaper and start with 150 grit, move up through then a progression of 320, 600, 1000, and finally 2000 grit. I always like to lubricate the sandpaper using some water because I feel like that helps the sandpaper last longer and cut more efficiently. Alright, here are all the blades polished up to 2000 grit, now it's time to start etching them. To begin the etching process, I degrease all of the blades using dish soap and hot water before submerging them in a solution of ferric chloride acid in water for around 30 seconds. 
Then, in order to make sure that I get an even etch, I rub the whole blade down with some steel wool in order to make sure that the acid is etching the entire surface of the blade. After etching, the blades kind of have a dull appearance, so it's time to do some polishing cycles in order to really bring out that hamon. For polishing, I use some loose abrasive powder, which is 1,500 grit, and mix that up with some oil to create a kind of slurry. It may not look very appetizing, but it sure does a good job of polishing. I apply the slurry to a cotton makeup removal pad, and then rub down the blade. It's important to just polish it all off for around 5 minutes or so in order to really bring out a high shine and make the hamon contrast pop. And after polishing for a while, here is the finished hamon. And here are all four blades after the polishing. The next step is to apply my logo to the blade. I do this using an electro etching machine and a vinyl stencil. I squirt down a little bit of water onto the blade and then lay the stencil over top and then use the etching machine in order to do a deep engraving of the name before swapping it over to the marking setting in order to actually darken that etch. Alright, so here are the handle materials that I'm going to be putting on these three blades. The first is this shredded carbon fiber with gold holographic flakes, and that's going to receive this royal blue inlay. The second is some green canvas micarta that's going to get this cool Juma resin bolster. And this is just kind of like a snake skin looking resin. And then the final handle is going to be mostly this red resin with honeycomb and a black G10 bolster. And then all of them are going to get black G10 liners as well. This process is pretty simple. I just cut out all of the individual handle components, flatten them all out, and then epoxy them together. Once all the epoxy is cured and the handles are all put together, it's time to flatten them out in order to drill the pinholes. I'm using 3 16 inch mosaic pins on all of these, so I'm just using a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill those holes. Before you actually attach the scales to the blades using epoxy, it's important to finish the front of the handle scales because once they're on, you can't actually touch them without scratching the blade. So I make sure that the front is shaped to a nice radius and then hand sand and polish them up to 2000 grit before buffing. The very last thing I do before epoxying the handles onto the blade is drill a bunch of little divots into the handle material. That provides an extra bit of room for epoxy to help adhere to the blade. I then degrease all of the components, lay them out in a nice row so that I can work efficiently, and then glue everything together using some G-Flex epoxy. One little tip for when you're using mosaic pins is to make sure that the alignment of the pattern on both pins is the same. Once all the components are put together, I just clamp everything up and leave them to cure overnight. It's also important to wipe all of the excess squeeze out epoxy from the front of the blade because that's impossible to get off once it is dry. Ah. 
After the glue is dry, it's time to protect that beautiful hamon finish using a little duct tape sheath with some phone book paper underneath it. Now it's time to start shaping the handles. I start by removing all of the excess handle material using a 60 grit belt and just bring it all down to the bare tang metal. I then put the flat platen on my grinder and start to do some contouring of the handle scales. I like to round over the back side of the handles and do a taper from the back to the front in order to provide a more ergonomic grip. In order to carve the relief for the fingers, I like to use the 2 inch contact wheel on the flat platen in order to bring those curves in. After I do the rough contouring, it's time to remove the flat platen in order to give me a slack belt. I then put on a 120 grit belt and do some more blending. The last thing that I do before hand sanding is use a scalloped 1x72J flex belt. This belt has a ton of give and flexibility which enables me to really blend all of the contours together really smoothly. On one side you can see the unblended side and then on the other side is everything nice and blended. With all three handles roughly shaped it's now time to start hand sanding to bring up that final shine. Like before, I just go through a grit progression of 320, 600, 1000, and 2000. After hand sanding, the blade tang can get a little scratched up, so I like to polish the entire tang of the blade. The last step for the handle is to buff using some pink scratchless compound from Combat Abrasives on the buffing attachment of my grinder. Here you can now see the difference between the buffed side and the unbuffed side. It's a really crazy difference in the amount of shine. The very last step is going to be sharpening the blades. I do this by setting the edge with a 120 grit belt until the burr is raised along the entire edge. Then I just go through a progression of 400 grit and then use a leather stropping belt that's loaded with green compound to polish the edge and remove the burr. I find that this grit progression leaves me with a really nicely polished edge with a nice bit of tooth left in it. Now it's time to test out the edge with some good old phone book paper. Looks like it's nice and sharp. And here are all three blades finished up. I'm super happy with how they turned out and I really like the diversity in the handle materials that we have on them. What I find really cool about this project is that even though each blade is the same steel and same general shape, they each have their own unique look to them due to the differences in handle materials and the unique hamon pattern on each knife. Thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions about anything that you saw in the video, please go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe because that helps us and our channel out a lot, and I'll see you on the next video. Stay sharp.